Hi everybody, today's topic is how long does benzodiazepine detox last? For those of you new to the channel, my name is Dr. B and this is Dr. B Addiction Recovery. Uh, on this channel we discuss all things substance abuse and try to bring some formal understanding to you. If you do like our content, please feel free to push the subscribe and uh, like button. And if you're so inclined, we do have a Patreon account for as little as $3 a month. You can contribute to our general global education endeavor. Let's get started. Uh, what are uh, benzo what is benzodiazepine detox like? I'm going to change this question as well as I, I have done in my opiate video and reframe the question for two reasons. One, I think the question is um, how long does benzodiazepine withdrawals last? Two, I think the question is wrong by using the term detox. As I've explained before and many times, that term is almost a meaningless term and it's misunderstood by the people that are instituting the detox programs and the public. And you can see that on some of these reality shows where someone is sent to detox and everyone's happy because they have overcome a huge hump. Now, absolutely, those first initial stages of dealing with your substance abuse and addiction are big issues to deal with and great accomplishments. I'm not taking away from that, nor am, uh, am I taking away from the anxiety and potentially physiological uh, issues people face. But nevertheless, the way the term is detox, what does it mean? You get the substance out of your system? Okay. Once you do that, uh, are you, uh, uh, have you ended your addiction? Absolutely not. And everybody out there knows that. And so it has this beginning and end that uh, I don't feel comfortable with and I have never have. And I've said that in videos years ago when I made a few. And just now they've changed the terms but with opiates to medically assisted withdrawal management. I like that term because beating substance abuse is not detox. Detox is just really getting the medication out of your system or lowering it, whichever is appropriate. And it doesn't mean much in a big way without taking away uh, the courage and the issues involved around this. Let's get started. What are uh, benzodiazepines withdrawal like? And again, just like opiates, uh, this depends on uh, the half-life of the benzodiazepine. Is it short-acting, long-acting? Does it have a quick onset like Xanax? How much are you using? How long have you been using? And is there a true anxiety beneath that issue? Is there uh, panic attacks beneath the issue of the dependence? And what are your other clinical factors that contribute to the withdrawal syndrome complex? And, you know, we could be talking anyway, anywhere from one, one day to uh, two weeks to a month. This becomes very questionable because for many, many people, this turns into a protracted withdrawal sy uh, syndrome, and this could last months to years. And for many people, it feels like a, uh, it really fe uh, it almost turns into a lifetime. Uh, let's uh, touch base on this. Uh, what are some of the uh, at these acute uh, symptoms and they have different stages and they come on at different times but i want to move through this quickly and I really cover as much as i can we're talking about tremors we're talking about anxiety we're talking about somatic symptoms for some people perceptual disturbances dysphoria seizures uh, autonomic instability that means your uh, sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system you know, you could have a severely increased blood pressure, heart rate. And this is a very dangerous class of substances to go through acute withdrawals. That's number one. Uh, and it needs to be done under medical supervision or under the care of a physician. And it's psychologically extremely difficult and underappreciated. And those that have gone through it, no. Uh, it's even worse if there is truly underlying anxiety, panic disorder, or uh, things like insomnia that the person was dealing with. Uh, oftentimes, there's even psychosis involved with uh, uh, the initial withdrawal. 
This leads into, not for everyone, but for enough people, into a protracted withdrawal syndrome that is a nightmare. And it could be any one of those issues lingering forever. Oftentimes, it's almost just like a dysphoria, a, 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 a uncomfortable feeling. Might be a sleep issue, might be a tremor. You hear all kinds of strange things, and they're all true. Different patients presented in different ways. And this can go on for many, many years. And it is really, um, uh, it's nightmarish, and it's real, and it's true. Um, uh, Let's go back to the idea of the initial use of benzodiazepines. And many people don't think about or have forgotten that the indications for this class of medication, which is under sedative hypnotics, is short-term use. And you want to avoid building up any kind of physiological or physical dependence. And you certainly don't want to get into the area of addiction. So you want to use, in general, as little as possible for as short a time as possible and address the issue in any or many other ways if possible. There's going to always be a small class of patients that end up having to be on different benzos for long periods. But the reality of it is this is one of the most common psychotropics prescribed, and it's been that way for many, many years. And it also contributes heavily to opiate overdose deaths. And over the last 25, 30 years, emergency department visits, overdoses, hospitalizations for the use of benzodiazepines has skyrocketed three, four hundred percent. I don't have the exact data. So it's uh, almost like a hidden epidemic what has happened with this medication. And uh, it's underappreciated. Uh, 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 how dangerous it is and how difficult the withdrawal complex is going from the short term to the long term protracted withdrawal, which really uh, brings me to the, the most important thing that I do want to address in this video. And uh, that is not just what the treatment can potentially be, uh, but uh, uh, what it's not. And it can't be given our system of care. Uh, uh, oftentimes when I hear people talking about going into detox for uh, benzodiazepine addiction or dependence, and uh, oftentimes many of these people, uh, some of them are young, but they've been addicted to it long enough, and some of them are older, and they've been addicted to this stuff for a long time. And it never makes sense to me when people are talking about going into detox for benzodiazepines because what is that? Three days? Ten days? A month? Uh, how rapid is the taper going to be? Uh, how is the person going to go home? And the, uh, this sort of detox is extremely dangerous and inappropriate, uh, although r very robust evidence. Uh, I'm going to argue that it's there, uh, clinical evidence. Uh, a more uh, sane and humane way to do this is uh, very long-term detox with slow tapering of the medication, with close monitoring of the symptom complex, whatever it may be, and for some people in this day and age, when so many people have been on this medication for so long, uh, you know, if you have a 50-year-old or 60-year-old that's been on a long time, we might have to accept the fact that, you know what, a low dose of their benzodiazepine, whichever one it may be, is where they're going to land at during this protracted uh, tapering that we're doing because you need to keep the patient comfortable. Think about it. Imagine asking someone in acute opiate withdrawals to feel that way for weeks, months, two years. That would be cruel. And in this case, it's also dangerous. And there's no quality of life either. So uh, it's uh, quite complex, uh, the uh, set of withdrawals. They, uh, for some people, not everybody, but for enough people, it extends into long-term 
very uncomfortable dysphoric withdrawal symptoms and uh, the treatments that we have aren't adequate because uh, wh what the uh, system is willing to pay for and what the practitioner's understanding is, is that you can taper down, quit right away. This, to me, is both cruel and it is ineffective. And I feel that clinically, from what I've seen, a better way is to utilize long-term, individualized tapers. And there are methods to do that where you empower the patient because this medication has such a strong grip on the psyche of the individual, there has to be methods here where you put the uh, onus of responsibility uh, and the power of choice in the patient's hand. And without going into how it's done in this video, once you do that, they are really empowered to take control of their own tapering. And as I said, with many people, you still have to deal with potentially having to stay on this medication long term. And now you have to assess the risk and benefit. And some people have serious underlying anxiety and panic attacks that's actually gotten worse from long term use of this medication. And you still have to deal with that. And at the end, you might have to end up in a place where there is low dose use long term closely monitored. I hope that helps in understanding a little bit more about this topic. If you like the video, click on the link above to my left. There's other videos regarding benzodiazepines. And if you are inclined, we would appreciate a subscribe and a like. Have a great day.